Uh, my name is Kira Vitara. I train out of Carlson Gracie Training Center and also 10th Planet with Eddie Bravo. Um, I train with Gil Martinez Elite Boxing and Dale with Diesel Muay Thai. I started with Jiu Jitsu in 2008. I was really young. I was in eighth grade, 13 years old. Uh, I've always been a huge daddy's girl. So when he told me he wanted me to try training in uh, 2008, I wasn't really into it. I was a cheerleader. It was not the cool thing to do. There's no girls training at the time. I was the only girl on the mat. And so I trained with my dad every single day. Um, every time we'd go there, no one would be my partner, just my dad. So I thought it was really cool that I could just hang out with him and learn new techniques and get um, understand what jiu-jitsu is all about. Uh, he registered me for a tournament two months later and I fell in love with it. My first competition, I went against two high school boys, beat him up a little bit and I, I knew I wanted to be a fighter after that. I grew up in Washington since I was in first grade. Um, after I graduated high school, that's when I started my MMA career. I had three fights already. I was two and one as an amateur and my dad was talking about moving to California or Vegas. And uh, I was homeschooled all through high school except for my freshman year. So I knew since I was 14 that fighting was what I wanted to do. And so moving to California to better my career and grow as a fighter, it was something that I knew that was going to be all for the positive. Um, my best friends are my brother and my sister. I'm really close with my family. So as long as I had my family supporting me, I knew that Vegas was going to be a good move. Um, I was told as uh, my first fight that Tough Enough was the promotion to go to if you wanted to make a name for yourself as an amateur that you had to fight for Tough Enough. And um, so I fought with FCFF, Chael Sonnen's card in uh, Portland. I fought uh, Kung Lee's card in Fremont. And then I was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for the big show, Tough Enough. I went there, it was a really run good organization. There's huge crowd. Um, I moved to Vegas, there's billboards everywhere with Tough Enough signs. So I was really excited being able to fight for them. Um, getting the 110 belt uh, was uh, a lot of fun. And then two months later, they asked me if I wanted another title shot. We didn't have any luck finding a 110 girl, but we did go down to 105. My opponent pulled out two weeks before the fight and I found a replacement, luckily. But after I got both belts, it was too hard finding any other fights. And it's still hard as a pro fighter. So being able to end my career with two belts, I felt really fortunate being able to fight with Tough Enough for that. As an amateur, I had a huge target on my back. I won Worlds, I won the um, Abu Dhabi Trials, I had the 110, 105 belt, so everyone wanted to beat me. Right now I'm one and one, I'm back to the bottom, so I definitely have to build my way back up. I'm gonna do Worlds next weekend, so I plan on making a statement with that. Um, all through high school, I had a very selective group of friends. I didn't really, I was the one that went out to all the football games. I didn't go to all the high school dances. I was always more just about, I was a Girl Scout all growing up. I was in the real tight group. Um, I was homeschooled, sophomore, junior, senior year. I was always just real close with the little kids, with my brother, with my wrestling team. And so as a coach, I coach at UFC Gym Anthem, at Green Valley. I help with the kids here. I help with the kids at um, Elite Boxing. And so with my fan base, I really try to reach out to the kids mostly. Uh, being that I started when I was 13, I knew what it was like being a kid, like just knowing this is my dream, but not a lot of people are supporting me. Not a lot of people believe in me. So I want to be the one to talk to everyone and be the role model for them and have them look up and say, look, I started when I was 13. If you want to be a fighter, if you believe in that, then you can really achieve your goals. I was homeschooled uh, because I was bullied my freshman year. And so to be able to give back, I know where, how it is in high school to get bullied. My little brother, he was uh, bullied a lot his kindergarten year. And so he was homeschooled for a few years. And so being able to give back, I feel like I can connect with um, people through a different way instead of just being the fighter that they see on TV or the fighter they see on Instagram. Like I want to be able to go to these events and connect to them more on an emotional level and be one on one with them, help them out, tell them my story, tell them what it's all about. And I want to take the toughest girl. I'm not being picky with my fights. I don't want to go against the girls that have had one, two fights. I'll go against the top 10 right now. If they can give me a a good shot with uh, one of the top five girls with Invicta, I'll take it in a second. Uh, one of the 10 Planet coaches, I was driving with him to practice one day and he looks at me and goes, okay, it's either Gremlin or, or Gizmo or Mogwai. And I was like, well, my dog's name, my grandma's dog's name is Gizmo, so I'll take for Mogwai. And uh, he says, cause I'm cute and little. And as soon as I get that bright light on me that I turn into a little Gremlin in the cage. My name is Kira Mogwai-Batara and I'm the future of MMA.